Welcome to Atma and today we are learning the History Brush Tool and the Art History Brush Tool in Photoshop. The History Brush Tool is located here and the shortcut is Y. But before I go ahead, I want to do a couple of things. I'll grab the Brush Tool shortcut for which is B. I'll make sure Color Mode is selected. Suppose you are asked to edit this brick wall image and they told you to edit this image destructively on the same image layer. So I'm going to click and select it. And they instructed you to draw colorful lines on this image. So I'm going to go and choose a color, red maybe. And then paint on top of this image. Now I'm going to select blue. Draw with this color. And lastly green. Now let's say after looking at this edit, the client says that he wants the red to be removed. Well, you can say we can hit Ctrl plus Z and then go back. Alright, let's try and do that. Ctrl Z, the green is gone. Hit Ctrl plus Z and now the blue is gone. And finally, if I press Ctrl and Z for the third time, now the red is gone. But if you remember, we were told just to remove the red. Here we not only got rid of the red, we also got rid of the blue and green in the process. So hitting Ctrl plus Z is definitely not the solution. Well, you can argue that you can use the eraser tool and just get rid of the red. Fine, let's try that as well. This is our eraser tool, shortcut is E. Make sure the image layer is selected, which in my case is. And now we go ahead and erase the red paint. You can see that it has entirely removed all the image pixels, including the wall. So the eraser is also not our solution. Now this brings us to the history brush tool. I'm gonna click here and then history brush tool. Now I'm gonna paint on top of this red. And voila, the red is removed, the wall is intact, even though they are on the same single image layer. Now we will dive into the details of the history brush tool. And for that, I'll be requiring this history panel. If you don't find it here, go to window and then history. The history panel actually records all the actions that you perform in Photoshop. To demonstrate what I mean, I'm going to first close Photoshop, then open the same Photoshop file again. So this is our document. And now if I head over to the history panel, you can see that the action has been recorded. What was the action? We had this Photoshop file called History Brush Tutorial and we double clicked and opened that document. So right from the get-go, it starts recording the actions. Now I'm going to explain the previous example using this history panel. First, I'll make sure this image layer is selected. Mine already is. Then I'll grab the brush tool which the shortcut is B. Select red from here. For the sake of this example, I'm going to paint the wall differently this time. So here goes our red paint. And as I will be letting go of the mouse button, keep an eye over here. And there you have it. The action of the brush tool has been recorded. Now I will select the second color, which is blue. And then start painting on the wall. And as you can see, I'm overlapping the paints right. I'll let go of the mouse button. And the action of the brush is recorded. Let's select the third color, which is green. And get on with the painting. This time too, the brush action has been recorded. Now what essentially happens when we press Ctrl plus Z? We undo an action or take a step backwards, right? So I'm going to do exactly that and show the process in action. And you also keep an eye over here. Notice how the highlight is on this level. It's going to change when I press Ctrl and Z. So Ctrl plus Z. The green is gone. And not only that, the highlight has also gone one step backwards and settled on this. I'll press Ctrl and Z again and this time I hope the blue goes away. It does. And also quite expectedly the highlight went to the previous level of history. I'll Ctrl and Z one last time and it takes us to the original image. So we are back to the state where we had just opened the document without any edits. So we have established that Ctrl plus Z takes us backward. So what takes us forward? It is Shift, Ctrl and Z. So if I hit that on my keyboard, I should go forward to this level and see the red paint. Let's do that. And quite surely, 
Hit Shift Ctrl and Z again to go another step forward to this level to see the blue paint. And then we go to the final state with the green paint. There's another way how we can go to different levels or states in history. That is simply we click on the level we want to go. For example, I want to go to the state where we had only the red paint. So I will click on this. Clicking on this will take us to the blue level. And of course, if you want to go back to the stage where we just opened the document, we click on this. I will click forward on the final level where we have all the three paints. Now I'll go back to the history brush tool and explain its functions. I will paint a small area over here with the history brush tool and want it to take me to the blue stage. So let's go ahead and try that. But instead it took me to the stage where we had the fresh document with no paints. And by the way, you can see that the history panel has also recorded the action of the history brush. So now back to why we are seeing the first stage of the document when I actually wanted to see the blue stage over here. That's because the history brush tool uses a reference image to go back to when we paint an area. So what is our reference image here? It is this one. How do I know that? Because the history brush icon is checked on this image. If I want the reference point to be the blue paint stage, I have to check on this. I'll go ahead and do that. But before that, I'm going to delete this history brush record so that we don't have this patch. So we make sure this is selected and then we click on this trash icon to delete it. Now let's put the check mark on the blue state. And now we paint with the history brush tool. And there you go. Now there's another way how you can create a reference point. I want the blue paint stage to be the reference. So I click on this. And now to create a snapshot of this reference image, we click here. See how the reference image is added up here. So I'll check that to mark it as the reference point. Go to the final stage. And then we paint with the history brush tool. But you may ask why we should take the pain of creating a reference point with a snapshot when we just could have checked our reference on this blue level. There can be many reasons. Maybe this action uses up a lot of your computer RAM and makes your computer slow. So you want to get rid of the actions but preserve the result. So maybe you want to delete the actions after red. All you have to do is click on it and then click on this trash icon. And also any actions after this level are also going to be deleted. So now we are just left with the red. By the way, it's also proper to mention now that once the history levels are deleted from here, you cannot get them back by pressing Ctrl plus Z. They are erased forever from the memory. So back to what I was explaining, all that I've got rid of all the heavy actions, I've stored the resulted image of those actions over here. I've already checked it as the reference point. So now if I paint with the history brush tool, I should get the blue just fine. And then again, if I check the reference point on this initial image without any edit, we should get the grey wall when we paint. Now with this button, you can treat a new document with the current state in the history panel. Suppose you want to make a new document with the red. Or let's go with the state with this history brush. I'll click here and this will take us to a new document with this image. See how the history panel of the new document says duplicate state? Because this new document was indeed created with a duplicate of this image. So I click on the first tab which was our old document. You can verify that in the history panel. It has all the old actions recorded. And this is our new one. With just the duplicate action. Now you can see that the history brush tool has all the options like the brush tool. You can check these out in my brush tool tutorial, links in the description. However, I'm just going to quickly show you that we can also customize our history brush tool. Right now we have this kind of round simple brush. We can customize that by going to brush settings over here or here. I'm going to select this square brush. And then you can change all the settings over here. I'm going to increase the brush size a little bit. And then add some scattering maybe. Let's see how the history brush tool looks. And you get this kind of effect. Next we are going to look at the art history brush tool. 
and it is best we use the artistry brush tool on a separate image layer. So I'm going to create one by clicking over here. And if I bring up the history panel, you can see that all the actions are recorded. I've opened this flower document and then created a new layer. Now if I go and paint with this artistry brush tool, it's going to get this image an artistic style. It uses the reference snapshot to detect the colors in place and then use them. For example, here in the reference snapshot, we have red and yellow. So while painting over here, the history brush tool will use only those colors. So if I draw from here to here, it's going to identify all the colors and paint accordingly. So sky blue, white, red, yellow, red again, white, and sky blue. I'm going to quickly complete the whole image. And there you have it, as if the flower has been painted or something. You can also have another go. Suppose you do not like the style on the red. If I paint again, it's going to give us another version of this region. Also, no matter how careless we are while painting, the colors are never going to blend out of proportion. So here's me painting recklessly on the flower. And the image is still recognizable as the flower. So here's our before and here's our after. Next, I'm going to explain the importance of the reference points while using the art history brush tool. But before that, I'm going to grab my brush tool, which shortcut is B. I've selected black on my foreground color and make sure the blend mode is hue. And then I paint on one side of the face. So now this region is black and white. Now let's create a new layer for the art history brush tool. And then select the artistry brush tool with the shortcut Y. I want to make the eyes artistic, so let's go ahead and do that. Well done. Now let's try this eye over here. But what is this? I expected a black and white artistic style. This is because the artistry brush tool is still using the original image as the reference point. So first, let's create a reference snapshot for this black and white image. But before that, I'll delete all these. We don't need them anymore. I'll hit enter for yes. This is the level I want to create a snapshot. Make sure it's selected and then we hit the snapshot button. There you go. Here's the snapshot of the black and white image. All we need to do now is check it as the reference point. All set. We create a new layer. And then we paint with the history brush tool. This eye looks fine. And the black and white eye too. Now we are going to look at some of the other attributes of the art history brush tool. When the brush size is big, we get less detail. So I'm going to increase the brush size with the right square bracket. And now I'm going to paint on the eyes. You can see that there are no details. We can hardly identify them as eyes. Now let's reduce the brush size. Then paint over the eyes. Now you can see the details, right? Now let's look at some of the options for the art history brush tool. Here we have options for the style of the paint. I'm going to use tight long. The painting will look something like this. Then if we choose dab, this is the style we're going to get. Next we have area. I'm going to enter a value of 100 pixels and then paint. So we got an area of this much. Now I'll enter a higher value of 200 pixels. So the area is bigger this time. Finally, let's try 500 pixels. 
and this is the biggest area of the three. Now let's take a look at tolerance. The higher the tolerance, the more textured and rough the painting is gonna be. So let's increase the tolerance value to let's say 45%. And here we have a blocky texture as we paint on the eye. Also, the colors are not gonna mix and overlap much. Now I'm gonna reduce tolerance to zero. You can see how the painting is more smooth this time. The different colors are also mixing more with each other. Here as well the artistry brush tool shares all the options of the brush tool but I'm just gonna quickly show you the custom brushes. Here we have a normal round artistry brush but we can also change this to our liking. We go to brush settings either over here or here. I'm gonna select this brush tip. And we can also adjust any of the settings over here. I'm just gonna give the brush some wet edges. And you see the painting pattern has completely changed. So this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.